Fresh and Felicia, we're going to talk about the Uninet iColor 560 today. This is an amazing machine. Amazing machine. We're able to do some things, including this shirt, full color printing on garments that we weren't able to do with either right. Dye Sub or with Cricut. Right. So this is really, it's a huge advance in terms of professionalism, the level of things that you can do with this thing you can't do with many other devices. I 100% agree. Now, there's a little bit of a learning curve, I'm not going to lie, and that's what this video is about. We're going to go into the setup to get you started on your first couple of projects, the things that we learned along the way, and it took us several weeks. At least. To, to get this going on. There's still things that we learn every day when we use this machine, but wow, what results. What are some of the things you made? The, this shirt is amazing. Yeah, look at that. Um, we've done, we actually did a picture of our, one or a couple of friends who were getting married. We actually printed their picture and put it on a shirt and it came out very well. It actually was kind of impressive. It and that's was. something you can't really do on a dark garment with dye sub right. or your Cricut devices. Correct. So there's really some next level printing that you do in a small business or actually in your home if you're just a, a stay at home crafter. So let's jump into it. Let's take a look at the setup and the software and what you need to know to get your Uninet iColor 560 up and running. What can you do with the Uninet iColor 560? Maybe a better question is what can't you do with it? Our biggest challenge with heat transfer vinyl and inkjet sublimation was printing full color on dark surfaces and garments. The iColor 560 solved that problem using their patented white overprint and underprint printing systems, and they look fabulous. Environmentally, laser transfer can be a little picky, but it's not so bad. We're talking chemicals here. So you probably won't want to work out of your unair conditioned Miami garage, you know what I mean? Your iColor 560 will work best in balanced humidity somewhere between 45 and 65% with an optimal temperature range of somewhere between 50 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Use a dedicated circuit of at least 15 amps if you can to avoid potential circuit flips. Maximum power consumption is about 11 amps on the 120 volt models. The iColor 560 comes complete with a total of five toner cartridges for full color CMYK printing, as well as their amazing fluorescent white cartridge. This enables you to add white as a spot color on dark paper or garments, or to print a white underprint or overprint in concert with the iColor Pro Rip software. Composite black is also available when using the white toner. There's also the option to add fluorescent toner or dye sublimation toner upgrade kits, as well as the exclusive iColor security, clear, gold, and silver toner options. Vector and line art images, including text, are likely to produce the best results, but we've seen some remarkable results with gradients and photographs too. I know, I know, I hate reading manuals too, but it's important. The manual for this machine is on your flash drive and it's also available online. Now this printer isn't cheap, so it's better to do the right thing when you're not sure what you're doing. Remove the security tape and the packing material from inside the printer. Carefully remove the black security paper from the white toner cartridge. Remove and gently shake each cartridge back and forth five or six times to loosen the toner that may have settled during shipping. The first slot here will accept either white or black toner. Now, it really depends on the type of printing you're doing, whether CMYK, underprint, or overprint. But don't sweat it. The Pro Rip software will tell you what to use and when and where. You can open the side panel to reveal the communication ports. Insert either the USB or the network cable, but not both, depending on how you wish to use the software to communicate with the printer. Or if you're connecting via Wi-Fi, you don't have to connect any cables. If you connect multiple cables, you'll just confuse the software and ultimately yourself. Insert the power cord and then power on the unit. You can configure the wireless LAN settings for the machine from the control panel of this printer using the Wi-Fi setup wizard using WPS or entering your SSID and password manually. A router is going to be necessary to set up a wireless connection because your printer will need its own local DHCP IP address. Yeah, you can make it static if you want and that's always a good idea. Design files can be printed directly from your favorite graphics program, as well as imported directly into the iColor Pro Rip. The iColor Pro Rip software allows the user to control the spot white channel feature, as well as spot color overprinting, where white is printed as a top color for textiles. No need to create additional graphics with different color configurations. This software does it all, and in one pass so you can enhance the brilliance of any graphic on darker garments with white behind the color. 
So let's install the software. Make sure all your other programs are closed and it's really best if your antivirus software is uninstalled. We found Windows Defender is the only program which to date has not affected the functionality of the ProRip software. Some of the more popular paid antivirus software programs can monkey with your firewall settings, and this can lead to problems with the installation and or the use of the software. So plug in the included dongle into a free USB port on your PC. It's a full-size USB, so you may need an adapter if your computer is newer. This dongle contains all the software, manuals and documents for your printer and software, and also serves as your license key. The dongle must be inserted at all times when installing or running the program. So with that said, you need to keep this piece safe. Navigate to the setup folder on the dongle and right click the setup file and select run as administrator. You can install the 64-bit system in most later computers and follow the instructions on the screen. You may be prompted to install .NET Framework, which is a necessary component of the ProGrip software. Accept the license terms and click Install. This installation normally takes several minutes to complete, so be patient. Be sure the iColor ProRip dongle is installed and you're connected to the internet. From the Windows Start menu, choose All Programs, iColor ProRip, or double-click the desktop icon that was created upon installation. Once the ProRip opens, the Q wizard will begin the installation of the support files for your iColor printer. Click Next and then Install Printer. Select the iColor 560 from the menu. Click OK. It'll advance to the next page where it will automatically search Uninet's cloud server for the official printer package. Click Next to continue the installation. Note that you may already see the printer installed in Windows. This installation is for RIP functionality. Next, click the Port Setup drop-down and select how your printer is connected to your computer. If connected via network, you can choose TCP IP. It's best, again, to set a static IP address for your printer so that the IP address does not change later on if your router loses power or if your network is reconfigured for some reason. If you're connected via USB, choose the printer as identified in the drop-down. For USB connections, the proper port will have the printer name in the description. If you need to change or reset the ports in the future, simply click Q, Manage Queues to view, update, or change the port settings. Select the proper print queue for your project. Then select the print mode, otherwise known as media type, and verify the size of that media before importing your graphic. Import the desired graphic by clicking the green plus icon and then navigating to the proper folder. You can also import by clicking File, Import File, or simply dragging and dropping your file into the queue. Once your image is loaded, you'll notice the pre-configured settings relating to the media being used in the printer. The queue tab shows the size of the media that will be used, where to load the media into the printer, and the paper type setting recommended. Each media type will contain this pre-configured data to make your printing experience as easy as possible. Overriding these settings is possible, but not recommended because it could yield undesirable results. Note that the mirror function is turned on automatically for any image loaded into the overprint queue, and that's kind of smart. You can also adjust the size of any image by dragging and dropping the corner of the image in the preview pane. Adjustments can also be made by using the sizing or positioning icons at the top of the screen. UniNet has created three configurations referred to as print queues to suit any printing project. The CMYK queue is for standard print jobs that do not require a spot color, best when printing on white media and for dye sublimation prints. The overprint queue is for printing white as an overprint, typically used for transfer printing. This is what we use to make prints for dark garments. For this configuration, the white cartridge is placed in the first slot of the iColor 560 printer. White prints on top of the other colors, so when it's transferred to garments or hard surfaces, the white spot color and colors underneath it really shine through. The underprint queue is for printing white as an underprint, typically used for transparencies, clear labels, or printing on dark media. White is installed in the last slot of the iColor 560 printer, where white is printed first as an underprint all in one pass. 
In this situation, the rip knows to make the composite black using CM and Y, and puts in white not only as a background color, but also in the image where white or page white is specified. The software also allows for color manipulation and removal, rasterization, cost calculation, professional layout tools, and direct printing from your favorite graphics programs. Honestly, it's quite badass, and this stuff ships standard with all iColor printers. So let's try an overprint project for a dark t-shirt, something we've never been able to do before we got our Uninet iColor 560. Now let's get this straight. This is not a simple vector image optimized for the iColor 560. It's more of a real world example of something weird someone might ask you to print or something you might want to print. And a really good example of how the white overprint helps all these colors and gradients, including white itself, really pop on dark surfaces. It already has a transparent background, so we won't have to fool with this one. But you can adjust your image using features including Knock Me Blackout or Knock Me Color Out and see the results in real time on the screen as you fine tune your edits. So the white toner performs the following functions. One, as a background layer that helps color show through on a dark garment that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see clearly. Two, to fill in the half tones or lighter images so that there is enough toner on the page to fully transfer it to your garment or to pull all the adhesive away. This is one of the reasons why you should really use white toner all the time. Yes, even when printing on a white garment, and even if there's no white at all in your artwork. You can even preview what it'll look like on your final media. When you're ready, hit print and send it to the iColor 560. The ProRip software defaults to the bypass tray. The bypass tray and the print tray both have stickers to tell you which way is up, and that's pretty smart. Incompatible transfer media shouldn't be used. The iColor Pro Rip print mode dropdown contains a list of all certified media. So let's get that perfect print onto a t-shirt. First, you'll need to marry your laser print to an adhesive sheet. Basically, we'll use heat to loosen up the glue and that glue will attach only to the laser toner and ignore the sheet if all goes well. This is why you'll need a reliable professional heat press with even temperatures across the heating platter. Too hot and the glue will melt all over the transfer sheet. Too cool and the glue won't transfer at all. Preheat the press to 310 degrees Fahrenheit or 154 degrees Celsius and keep the press closed for at least five minutes prior to proceeding to heat up the lower platen. Place the adhesive sheet on top of the print, adhesive coated side down. The image and the adhesive should be face to face. The adhesive side is the non-marked, smooth coated side. It helps to fold a corner of the adhesive sheet before pressing. This gives you a good place to start when you're ready to peel. Cover the two sheets with craft paper, a Teflon sheet, or the included eye color black cotton cover garment and press the two sheets together in the heat press at 310 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Celsius for 120 seconds with medium pressure. Open the press and immediately Yes, while it's still hot, and then peel the adhesive sheet away from the transfer sheet diagonally in one slow and low fluid motion. Many people will trim off the edges of the transparent transfer sheet to ensure no excessive adhesive sticks to the garment, including the chance of a white box appearing around their design. At the same 310 degrees, place your garment on the heat press. Position the transfer sheet print side down onto the garment. You can use heat resistant tape to secure the sheet to the garment to ensure the transfer won't lift prematurely or shift before being pressed. For 100% cotton shirts, cover the transfer sheet and garment with craft paper or a Teflon sheet and press the garment using a heat press at 310 degrees Fahrenheit or 154 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds with medium high pressure. If you are pressing onto a 50-50 cotton polyester press it at a 285 degrees Fahrenheit or 140 degrees Celsius. If you're pressing onto 100% poly, press at 265 degrees Fahrenheit or 129 degrees Celsius. Spandex or lycra material is not recommended at this temperature. Remove the garment from the press carefully and immediately lay flat. Allow it to cool for at least five minutes. Removal while still warm can lead to an incomplete or faulty transfer. Perform this step within 60 minutes or less. Once the garment is completely cooled, 
Carefully peel away the transfer sheet in one smooth, continuous rolling motion. It is suggested that you start your pool from an area that has the most toner coverage. The image will adhere to the garment. And then you'll want to take the white sheet that came with the system and press that onto the shirt for about five to 10 seconds. And that's it. See, it's not that hard. I'm not gonna lie, there's some things that you'll need to tweak and you'll figure out your workflow and your costs and a lot of other little sneaky tips that you'll figure out as you work with the Uninet iColor 560. It's an amazing machine with incredible results. Now in the next series of videos, we're gonna talk about best practices, some tips and tricks that we found will make your garments last longer and look better. Thanks for watching. Please leave your comments if you've observed anything about the iColor 560 below in the comments below and make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing your creations with the iColor 560.